Are you looking for inspiration to use your spell binders or really any other card kit? Today I have one card kit and 50 A2 size cards created from it with plenty of extra. This works best for any card kit that has patterned paper. I have a six by six pattern paper. I'm using the August 2022 card kit of the month from Spellbinders called Butterfly Sparkle. I'm going to try to use as much of the kit in terms of like a diversity of the things that are offered in the kit as possible so that you can get a variety of inspiration. But there's so much in this kit. You can easily make, I think you'd make 50 more cards um, similar to how I am today. If you are making your own card kit and you need a different size or you're working with a different kit and you need different size pattern paper, that will work too. Because what I have over on JessCrafts.com is paper busting templates. And that's what I'm using. That's what those you know printed sheets with the sketch are. It tells you exactly how to cut a six by six piece of paper to make two or more cards. However, if you don't have six by six paper, there's other papers at JessCrafts.com or I'm making A2 size cards today, but maybe you need to make five by seven or slimline or want to. Um, those are also, there's templates for that, for those size of cards and those size of papers over at Just Crafts, a lot of diversity. But because I have six by six paper and this kit comes with A2 size cards, that's what I'll be doing today. I picked a number, I picked five templates. Four of them make two cards each and one of them makes three cards each. This is single-sided paper in my kit. It's also a little bit on the thinner side, which is totally fine because I use cardstock mats, so that adds some heft to them. And then, because they're single-sided, I personally like to mix my patterns. You do not have to do that. So one piece of paper makes two cards. But if you're only working with single-sided paper, all of the elements of the card, so for instance, what I'm working on right now, has three squares, all three squares would be from the same piece of pattern paper. And you might not like that look. You might like a variety kind of like I do. I prefer to use two pieces of pattern paper and then mix them. So I cut two pieces with the same template using the same directions and then I swap them so that some of the squares or whatever elements are in there, rectangles will be in one pattern and some will be in another. With this particular paper pad, there were two of each pattern. And so what I wound up doing in order to make 50 cards, to make a lot of cards at once, is if I picked a pattern paper that, or two actually, when I picked two pattern papers that I liked together, that I liked with the sketch, because I can also, you know, see the sketch that they're going to combine with, then I took both sheets of each of those patterns. So then for each set here, there's, f so for each set that makes two, I picked two patterns and there's two of each sheet. So that's four papers and then it will make eight cards. One of the sketches I chose makes three cards. So I chose three papers and two of each. So in the end, there was 18 of that. All those kind of details will be over at JessCrafts.com in a coordinating blog post where I will show you every completed card in a picture. So you'll get to see all 50 cards. But today I will show you the assembly of one of each set. So you'll see the assembly of five cards um, from start to finish. And then um, the, yeah, the still pictures later. What I'm doing here is on the template, it tells you exactly how to cut your six by six piece of paper. You know, make this piece three by three, make this, you know, three by three inches, make this piece one and a half by four inches, whatever. I'm following those cuts for the pattern paper. And then on the sketch, it tells you what size your mats need to be. You could choose not to do cardstock mats, but I personally like the look of cardstock mats and many of the sketches I think work a little better with them, but they're by no means necessary. So if you need it, or if I call for a cardstock mat, it will tell you on the sketch what size to cut the mat. This particular card kit from Spellbinders does include some cardstock, but not enough cardstock to do all of these card mats, particularly because I each color in the Spellbinders kit. There's just one of it. And I personally find it easier to pick one 
color of cardstock and use it for like all eight to 18 of the cards that I'm going to make. And one piece of cardstock is not enough to cut the mats for eight cards. In the roughest estimate, I would say one piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock is enough to make the mats for two cards, but usually more than that. It totally depends on the card sketch. Some require much bigger or smaller mats, but you're gonna need more cardstock than is in the kit. And so I think that's important to point out. Okay, here's my first card. This is six by six paper busting template number seven for A2 size cards. It calls for a long rectangle, a square, and then a little skinny rectangle along the bottom. And that skinny rectangle is a great place for a stamped sentiment. Today, I'm actually going to use the foam sticker sentiments that came in the kit. So with each set of cards, I'm gonna focus on a different embellishment that was part of the kit. So there's these foam stickers and they have a lot of sayings on them. There's like, hey, hello, hi, shine, sparkle. I'm gonna let those be sentiments. I don't think you need a sentiment on the front of your card and I am gonna have some cards in this video that don't have sentiments because I think it means then when you are ready to need, like you need a card. Sorry that I am off screen right now. I am trying to get the little pieces out of, so like in the word hey, in the H, there's a little piece of glitter foam in between the loop of the H. And I was getting that out and then I realized you couldn't see it. But the reason I don't always put sentiments on cards because then when you're ready to use a card, you can add your sentiment then. So, you know, like I need a birthday card, but I made this a thank you card, so now I'm stuck. Okay, kind of a bummer. You can then add the happy birthday when you need it. Or you don't ever have to add anything to the outside of the card, and then you can just put your message inside. This, for me, works particularly well because I like to donate a lot of my cards. And so not having a sentiment means that I can... They can be used for anything by the organization who needs them. And so I just like to put jokes inside it, and then it can just be an encouragement card on a random Tuesday. So I'm also using the die cuts, which will come into play again on another kit, but I wanted to feature the glitter words, and then I supplemented it with a die cut, and I decorated all of those. You're only going to see six of that one because I ran out of the cardstock that I needed to finish them off and it only arrived just as I was um, doing the voiceover of the video. Okay, now I am on to my next card, which is Paper Busting 6x6, number 30. All of these will be linked in the blog post so you don't have to like write them down or anything. And they're PDFs that you can download and print for yourself. And basically you cut your six by six piece of paper into a bunch of two inch squares. And then you make your little cardstock mats two and a quarter by two and a quarter. You'll see sometimes I'm taking random scraps of cardstock and I'm placing it behind these pieces as I glue them together. And that's just to give me a little bit more support. So because that large dark pink piece is kind of hanging off the other two smaller, or sorry, the other two um, squares, by putting that little bit of support, it all makes it one level and nothing gets kind of lumpy and bumpy. So that's what that is. And I'm using scraps of cardstock that I created by cutting mats for other cards in this collection. Then I am also taking die cuts for this one. This one, uh, the focus is on the die cuts. So um, the previous one, I kind of focused on the glitter words. And here will be the die cuts, but I'm not going to use them again. I'm going to focus on some other things because this card kit is jam packed. It has dies, chipboard embellishments, these like really cool 3D stickers, the die cuts, all that. So I'm just picking some die cuts. These are going to be the ones that do not have a sentiment at all. And here you see again, I'm putting some scrap stuff behind it. That is just like a little bit thicker than cardstock. It's like cardboard that sometimes comes in packaging um, to keep something stiff. So it's like literal trash, but I'm using it instead of foam tape. So just use foam tape here. Um, the card kit came with foam tape but not enough for the amount of cards that I was doing, which is totally reasonable because 
course, most people have foam tape in their stash. But I do like that because the card kit comes with like foam tape and adhesive and card bases and envelopes, you could like really even craft on the go with it because you kind of just need a paper trimmer to go with it. Um, but I did add. So almost everything in this video is from the card kit, except for that I added additional cardstock, adhesive, and card bases, which is really just more cardstock or like, you know, the, the little bits that I'm putting behind these to pop them up. That's technically still just cardstock. So it's really just extra cardstock, extra adhesive, which I would say pretty much everyone has on hand or is available relatively inexpensively. I do use thick cardstock even for behind for my card mats, mostly because I don't like to buy multiple kinds of cardstock. So for when I die cut something like uh, later on in this video, I will die cut the dies from this kit, which is a really beautiful, delicate butterfly and, the, and a delicate smile sentiment. I do not like cutting things like that out of 65 pound weight cardstock. I think it bends a lot. I don't think it looks substantial enough on a card. And I'm just not the kind of person who's going to be able to, in my small space, keep organized both 65 pound and 110 pound cardstock. I did pick the dark pink to be where I would put all of the die cuts because I thought that the most die cuts would stand off of that and then the more busy patterns went behind. I am working on now uh, six by six paper busting template number 28. It calls for this little tiny rectangle, which will be where I put um, my embellishment, but you could of course stretch a little further than that. This was originally inspired by the fact that um, some doodle bug pads come with these one and a half by two inch pieces, which is the size of where I am putting my butterfly. Now, these are super, super simple. Again, no sentiments because I'm just using these butterfly stickers. I was apparently a little rough with that butterfly sticker and I pulled it right off. So you may want to just test your stickers because if you think you're going, like the person who's going to handle them is going to be a little rough with them, it might be nice to add a little extra adhesive. But honestly, I didn't notice that in any other ones. I think it was just a fluke. So, um, I just kind of stuck these butterfly stickers down and I honestly, I think that's enough. These are actually a really cool embellishment. They're dimensional, but yet they can go flat in an envelope so they will not add any extra weight or like any need to add extra postage because they just press flap and they pop up when you take them out of the envelope and boom, there's eight cards of that too. And there was exactly eight butterflies stickers. So it was just perfect for the amount that I was creating. This is six by six sketch number 19 for A2 size cards. I love this one. It's so fast to do, but I really recommend making yourself a template. So you saw there at the beginning, I had a piece of white cardstock that I cut because on the template, it describes exactly how to cut and measure this piece that looks like a banner. And then when you cut that banner piece, it creates this, the extra piece, which is the focal point or like the place where you put your embellishment on the card that looks like, um, as you know, a triangle on the bottom. And I just did it one time on a thick piece of cardstock. And then every time I have to work with this template, I just use that and I take my piece of paper and I cut it to three by six and I hold the template over it and then just cut along the two lines or you could trace and then cut if that makes you, if that works more sense for you. But that way I'm not making that measurement every time. I'm making it one time and creating a template. So if you have, if you're looking at any of my templates that are maybe not just rectangles, which a lot of them are because that is the easiest way to cut paper, I will make templates for them and to kind of help myself along. So I focused on the die cuts, I focused on the glitter words, I focused on the stickers. Now I'm gonna focus on the chipboard elements. This is a little trickier because for the die cuts, there was two of each, or for the stickers, there were just like eight that they were all pretty similar, but the chipboard pieces are a lot more random, which is cool because it means that you're getting some unique stuff, but it also means that like I had to kind of think carefully about like which ones I thought made sense for a card and went with my pattern. Like I had originally put the hot air balloon and a sentiment on top of that white dot 
white paper with black dots, but because the hot air balloon and the sentiment were both white, they didn't really stand out. So then I chose to shift it over to one of the butterflies. You may notice that sometimes when there's supposed to be eight of each of these cards, sometimes there is only seven. And that's because I'm saving one to the side to make an Instagram reel. So that, you know, for people who like 30 second tutorials and not 20 minute talking, talking, talking tutorials, they will be over on Instagram where I like really quick run through how one of the cards is assembled to give you an idea. I did find that if I was not careful and I peeled up these chipboard elements, sometimes the last layer that was the sticky backed layer would come off. So you probably want to be a little bit more gentle with them or I didn't really so much mind. I kind of sometimes like to be quick. So I was like, I'm just going to slap some glue on the back. And I thought that would be faster than fussing with them. And then if they were a little bit sensitive, I didn't want them to fall apart on my recipient. So instead, I just glued them down. But it's kind of a bummer. It could be also just like, I don't know why some of them came off because many of them were really secure and perfect and had no problem so it you know again just could be fluke but something to keep in mind if their uh, glue easily solves the problem this was definitely a little trickier i'm kind of using some different design thoughts and decisions um i kind of like maybe i should have picked not a butterfly paper for this design to go with the chipboard just because most of the chipboard pieces don't really have anything to do with butterflies which is fine, just that I probably would have considered um, a different pattern paper as a good fit there. And that's, you can see, like, I'm kind of saving, I picked out a piece of chipboard and put it with the card that I'll make for Instagram, just so that um, I can make those cards really quick. And I'm not having to pull out my embellishments in my card kit again. Here, I am working on the final card sketch that I picked out today. This is number 39. It includes four little tiny squares at one and a half inches and then one larger three by three square. Because it has those small one and a half inch um, squares in the background, I really recommend a pattern paper that is generally of a smaller scale. You don't want anything with that's really big and bold. I liked how this pattern paper um, had the sparkles in it. I thought like it really contrasted well with the cat paper. However, I, when I tested out my embellishment, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this butterfly on it to kind of tie in the butterfly wings on the cat. And then I'm going to do this smile and I'm going to cut them out of the gold foil cardstock that came with the kit. Very happy with the idea. I think it looks beautiful on the black paper, but then I went to glue one of the smile words on top of the cat paper and I was like, okay, you can't even see that. So quick change of plans. The butterfly, you can cut out the gold butterfly and there's a die for the solid butterfly, which is great, very versatile. The smile word does not come with an outline die, which is perfectly reasonable, makes sense. But you can make your own if you really like, you know, I really wanted to use the smile for half of the ones that I was creating. It didn't matter that it didn't have that background, but I wanted to have it as an option for the cats. So I took my smile word, I glued it to some a scrap of black cardstock, and then I'm just going to fussy cut around it. If you're not comfortable fussy cutting, you can often also trace the dye and then cut around it, which is still fussy, but you don't have to like guess if you're even from the edges. I mean, you can just follow the lines instead, which makes some people more comfortable. I freehand fussy cut it, but if you wanna avoid the freehand aspect. And then here, as you can see on the black, the smile worked out great. I'm gonna hold the everything down with a block because I'm using just a tiny bit of glue. I don't want to use like a lot of glue because then it will like leak out um, of the edges. And while my Barely Art glue does dry clear, it's not like completely unnoticeable. And even still, I like to keep it a little bit neat. If a little bit comes out the edges, it happened on mine. It was fine. You know, it doesn't look bad. But there's how I kind of fussy cut out that smile word and that made it 
a bit more prominent. Now at this point, um, once I've glued all of the butterflies on and all that, I will have 50 completed cards from this card kit. But as you can see, this is what's left. Like, first off, I have those dies forever. I have the stamp set, which I didn't even get a chance to use in this video because I was featuring, you know, five other things from the card kit. I have that forever. I have a bunch more paper, the cardstock, etc. So I'm going to keep it all in this plastic folder, at least for the next little while. And then here's one of each of the cards that I created as just a sort of example. If you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.